Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is TweetFEV. Some people call me Dan, some people call me Tweet. Call me whatever you like. Here, we're gonna talk about these toys. Our toys, fun toys. Professional toys, expensive toys. But they are all FPV, and if you haven't been around these things, boy, are you missing out. I have had so much fun the last couple weeks flying the eye gout challenges, which is exactly what that video was you just watched. That was week nine. Um, it was kind of a scavenger hunt of sorts. There was a lot of different things you had to complete, and uh, I got most of them in. And there was some extra stuff that could go on in there that I chose not to do. But if you caught my Friday, Thursday live stream, uh, we did kind of a community edit. I had all the footage. You guys kind of helped me place it where you would, where you thought it worked best, and I think it turned out really well. A few things did need to get moved around to get that um, Odysseus's arrow, the flying through the raptors. Uh, I went back to my park spot a week, uh, a day later, and I thought I had it, and I found a really good spot to do that. Problem is, there was only 11 gaps to fly through. There had to be a minimum of 12. So, rode around that little area, counting everything I could find. Then I found the raptors in this little, sh this little outdoor um, dining shed thing. And there had to be like 25 of them in there. It was crazy. So that got me through the challenge. Didn't get a letter this week. Uh, next week is going to be very interesting. It's um, power loops and, um, yeah, it's like time power loops, either going through a loop at the bottom and then a loop going through a hoop at the top. So it's going to be a pretty interesting challenge. So anyways, today we are going to try to finish up this guy here. If you don't know what this is, this is the... 533 tiny trainer that I've been trying to build with you guys for the last couple weeks. As you can see, if you were around for the last one, I did do a little work on the side. A lot of talking last time, and I needed to get some work done on this. So um, it's pretty close to button up, but now we just kind of have to deal with the software side of it, the beta flight side of it. So we'll walk through that today. I've got a lot of stuff going on. I've got a giveaway to give away. Giveaway to give away? An item to give away. It's the. Uh, this guy here, this is the sub-250 FPV crate from GetFPV. Um, when I purchase these, I purchased two, one for me and one for you. And that is going to go away today. If you haven't entered into the drawing on that one, well, sorry. Uh, you might miss your chance. Or, you know, you know, I'll just be cool and um, let me post up the link for that guy. All right. Stalling for time, stalling for time. Bad YouTuber here. And control C and No, what am I doing? I need another monitor. And right 
here. If you haven't gotten in on the giveaway for the, the crate thing I got over here, hit that link. That'll take you to the Google Doc, fill out your info, and you'll get in the drawing for tonight. If you do enter it, just be aware, uh, I need you guys to cover shipping. Um, I'm operating this channel on a shoestring budget, and I, I, can't, be, I can't be going out too far. Uh, into the red, if you know what I mean. Uh, not that I'm doing this to make a profit, but I'm certainly not doing this to take a loss. I'm doing it to help you guys, to help the community, to bring my knowledge out there, what little bit I have, mostly for FR Sky products, because that's most of the questions I answer. Thank you, FR Sky. But uh, if you're interested in that, that is, uh, that's the link for it. And if you're interested in all things Tweet FEV, which I, I hope you are, I hope you're not here just for the, the swag, head over to my link tree. It has um, links to my Discord, my YouTube channel, Instagram, uh, affiliate programs. Affiliate programs are huge for me. Um, I know it seems kind of shitty, but they uh, they are what they are, and they do make this uh, hobby go around. And uh, also my email address. If you want to talk to me, if you have any questions or problems or concerns, uh, Discord's the best way. Email second. YouTube comments, the worst place to look for troubleshooting advice. Just throwing that out there. But I'll still hit you up either way. Uh, all right, so over to the chat, Angel FPV, welcome, buddy. Robert Ortlip, glad to see you again. Uh, Francisco Mitz, yo, welcome. Mike Bergman, hey, welcome to the live stream. Burgess FPV in the house, double A. James Long, thank you guys for stopping by and checking us out. And you are right, this is the longest build ever. Um, I'm not in a super huge rush to get this done, although every time I look at it, I'm like, damn, I gotta finish this thing. Uh, it's probably because I've got another 533 trainer. Tra yeah, yeah. That word's hard to say. 533 tiny trainer put together on the wall that I've been flying uh, in the meantime. But this one is special. For the most part, it's the exact same build, except for the flight controller is different. This is the Mamba F4. AIO stack, this this little guy here, this toothpick AIO stack. I turned autofocus on and it's biting me in the butt here. So what's special about this flight controller is one of, I think, two flight controllers I know of that are native beta flight flight controllers, but you can flash uh, Falco X. That's a, um, a uh, Flight One product and I've heard Falco X flies freaking phenomenal and I want to see what the difference is. So I'm going to build this up, tune it, fly it, beta flight style, then we're going to go with Falco X, and I want to see if there's, a, if I can see the difference, if I can feel the difference. Um, I know there'll be some placebo effect in there because, hey, we're all human. That's how it works. Um, but it'd be interesting to see. Uh, Reese FPV, welcome, buddy. Thanks for stopping by. And as Robert Ortlep says, uh, hit the like button. It's free tonight. It costs you nothing to hit that like button. If you like what I'm doing here, hit that like button. If you don't like what I'm doing here, hit it. Uh, Three times, twice, three times, something like that. Whatever it makes you, you know. <sighs> I ruined that one, didn't I? Double A asks, I'm very interested in the powertrain. Can't find anything right now without uh, piercing it out to do LEDs. Pricing enough to do LEDs? Uh, anyways. Um, yeah, so I have done a little bit of work to this since the last live stream. Let's go ahead and uh, try to zoom in on this a little bit. Nope, wrong window. Right, guys, as usual, I am working on a single screen here, so might have to uh, bear with me a little bit. All right, so oh, got to save changes. And let's zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay. So here we go. Uh, without piecing it, let's see. Uh, double A asks, I am very interested in the powertrain. Can't find anything right now without piecing it out to do the LEDs. Um, Tiny's LEDs sells the whole LED kit. Uh, I do recommend getting, like, they have, like, a pro kit and a basic kit. Get the pro kit. It comes with a back. As you'll see, you'll see why right here in a minute. All right, so let's look over here at the build. Um, 
you're already looking at it. I got to go look at it. So you're going to stare at the side of this for a minute. So the Tiny's LED kit comes with uh, the forearm LEDs and the center plate, which also has the, the pin headers on it to connect the arm, arm LEDs, which is really nice. makes it super easy. Problem I ran into is this flight controller doesn't have enough output on its 5 volt voltage regulator to power my VTX and the LEDs. So, yeah, plugged it in, got nothing on the 5 volt rail. Had to do disconnect the 5 volt consumers, and I had to wire in this back right here. It's one of the, the cheapo, craptastic iFlight ones, the kind you get in um, something like this. The, the beta FPV or, or the, the um, iFlight DJI analog rapid fire mod faceplate adapter thingy. Uh, it works good enough for what I'm doing here, but with uh, that back on there, this thing works just fine. BTX powers up, LEDs power up, and as you can see here, da -da -da -da, it's pretty darn bright. Uh, a double A, yes, it does actually all fit in it, but you do have to be very uh, strategic about your build. There's not a lot of space to waste. Um, the VTX I'm using is the Flywoo uh, VTX. It's uh, kind of a, a triangular looking VTX. That's the VTX I'm using in here. Um, you could go with, say, like a Unify or a Ishii Nano on this little rubber top plate. You can see there's not a lot of space here. You gotta be very um, deliberate about the size of standoffs you used. So something I had to do after the live stream, I didn't have enough space to fit all this crap in here. So I had to go back and get rid of the standoffs I had here and just add, so I had the, the bigger blue standoffs that came with the flight control. I had to add these short pink ones to drop the stack height down even more. Every little bit, um, really makes a big difference in this build. So you may have to assemble it and disassemble it and reassemble it maybe five or six times to, um, to get it to actually all fit. So I think if this is the first time you're going to build this, I would, I would suggest building up the center section and then going back and soldering the motors on afterwards. The, the, the way I did it, I, I always soldered the motors first after, our, like, just initially installing the stack. Um, I have to, I had to take off the front two motors, take off all my my tape, peel the flight stack back, change the mounting for the flight controller. It's a big pain in the ass, but um, every uh, the thing that takes me the absolute longest about any build is just the stack hardware. By far the most complex part of any build that I've ever done. Uh, let's see, back to the chat. Uh, T-Bird, welcome, buddy. Um, we're going to try to finish this thing today. I don't know. Uh, Robert Orlup, i got some run cam micros that are almost as small as a TBS Micro 200. Uh, yeah, the run cam ones are very small. I used to use the run cam ones, but um, I think I ran into an issue with one of them, and they just kind of turned me off after that. Um, typically my, uh, my VTX of choice now is this little guy here. That's the, uh, the Ishii Nano. They're, they're super cheap. They're super small. I think they do up to maybe 200, 200 milliwatts. I don't know. Let's double check that here. Ishii Nano. DTX. Oh no, this goes up to 400 milliwatts. I totally forgot. Yeah, so that's what it looks like when you get it. Obviously, I strip all that crap off of there and only use what it is that I need. Uh, since I don't, I don't ever power my cameras through my uh, VTXs. Um, you can save a little bit of weight and and wire, but you know you don't want stray wire anyways. So that is the VTX I use. That seems awfully expensive for that. Not expensive, but I think it's cheaper other places.
Eh, not that much cheaper. So it's a $14 BTX. Um, Banggood's a good place to get them. Just, you know, you, you kind of buy them before you need them. You don't, uh, you don't go to Banggood when you want to build something. You go to like stock up on spare parts. So at least that, that's the way I, that's the way I do it. All right. So, uh, Sai asked Supman, how's the build going? It's going incredibly slow. Um, just because eh, it's just the nature of the way I do live streams. It's mostly a lot of Q and A just helping you guys out. And, uh, we get off into weird, weird tangents off to the side. The build is almost secondary. It's just something to do to fill <laughs> dead space. Kind of, um, right, right, cool. My next purchase. Yep. It, it's a good VTX by, by more than one though. And then, uh, tiny's LEDs. I can wade my way through my shop of shit here. Uh, Tiny's LEDs sells. Wrong drawer. Sells uh, these little BTX boards. Like this. So this one's for uh, a tiny tank. And all it does is, uh, you know, it, it makes a mounting plate for the VTX. This one here is for a, this one's for the Ishii Nano. So you would have your, your mounting plate here. You drop your VTX a bunch of times on the ground. Uh, and then you would just bridge the solder points uh, from one side to the other here. And then it creates uh, nice big pinouts with a way to mount it on your stack kind of like like so these aren't the easiest things in the world to install um they can be pretty darn difficult the pads are really small on these vtx's and the pads on these are pretty darn small too uh but they make them for all sorts of different vtx's like the, the tbs unifies and the ishi nanos the rush tanks um it's always nice to have a few of those on hand so if you're going to purchase from uh um tiny's leds uh use my foot no i don't have a plate like uh, when you go there, purchase the LED kit, purchase some of those mounting boards. You never know when you're going to need them, or if anything, you can cut them up and use them as spacer material. It's just, it's just a thin PCB. Uh, yeah, Robert Orlup Squirrel. <laughs> right. Double uh, A, anyway, I can support tiny LEDs for sure. I know they will fit. Thanks. Yeah, uh, tiny LEDs, uh, they've they got some awesome products, and I, I, they're... Uh, they're an American-based company. Obviously, I'm sure everything they have is built in JA Pan, but you know, what isn't? Just drink your water, boys. That's all. Gotta watch my weight. I gotta weigh in this month. Yay. Uh back a big big magnifying lamp. Um uh, yeah, I don't know if you've seen the the magnifiers that uh Pyrodrome was selling. But uh Let's see, MAG magnifying glass. So let's see if they still have them. I wanted to order a set of these, but I I just don't want to know any better. I got a feeling if I did get something like this, I would never not be able to use it. But people I know that have these things just absolutely swear by them. They it, they're uh, they're worth they're worth the twelve bucks. Sorry, I use man math. That's twelve dollars to me. Yeah, the twelve dollars they want for him go away. Super useful if you're uh, having a hard time soldering. This a good soldering iron and some good solder. Uh, people say flux, but eh, that, that's a crutch. You shouldn't really need flux, but it, you do want to have a flux pen or some uh, liquid flux on hand either way. Yeah, but I'm not old yet. Oh, uh, well, closer to 40 than 30. I can tell you that. Uh, what is a good prop for 1407, 3400 KV? Uh, what size frame? Are you looking for a 3 inch, 4 inch, 5 inch? Takes all the guessing away uh, during soldering. Yeah, it does. Uh, instead of that, I use one of these guys. It's the next best thing, it's just portable. Um, if you took a look around the uh the empire of dirt that i'm living in um last thing i need is more big stuff like that floating around 
but uh, one of these, if you don't have one of these, definitely get one. It's, uh, it's useful for so many things. Checking your solder work. This is almost more useful to me than a multimeter during a build. Uh, checking for solder. You can, you know, check for slivers in your fingers, things like that, you know. Super useful. Super useful. Uh, four inch. Ooh. Are you looking for what kind of flying? These are all these are all important factors. Um, are you looking for like long range cruising? Are you looking for acro? Are you looking for racing? What uh, are are you are they gonna be ducted? You know? Let me know. Let me know what you're working with. Uh, so, anyways, this thing's pretty much built up. I did I did something a little different with the cameras. I installed it upside down um, because when you get this whole thing together, oh hey wait, I forgot to turn this on the uh, the sub box uh, when you install the camera the this one this is the run cam racer nano 2 the pin uh, the pin connection kind of hits the frame so if I mount it upside down in there it clears it and then the, the pin connection ends up way down here in the bottom of the chin so that works out really well luckily this camera does have the flip function uh, acro acro on four inch let's go look at some props by size four inch. Let's see, we're gonna want a what size motor did you say you were running? Uh let's see, 1407. And I assume you're on 6S, 4S. You're on 4S, aren't you? Hmm. Let's see, you're gonna want something with a lower pitch. I'm thinking probably. These Wind Dancer 4032s would probably be a good choice for that. Uh, these aren't the most durable props in the world. Um, let's see if uh, T Motor makes a prop for that. Props, four inch. Thirty-two. Yeah. Um, are they uh, are they a T mount or are they a uh, single post uh, mount prop? That's that's another thing because uh, some of those some of those motors are T mount and some aren't. Darn it! You're right. Wrong screen. Bad YouTuber. All right. Acro um, 4S and are they T mount like? Um, Are they T mount like this, or are they a standard mount like this? T mount or the standard single hole mount? That's another thing you got to think about. Uh, yeah, TS one hundred with the Realm so so the Realm firmware is pretty darn good. Uh, Manamana, hey hey man, welcome. Good to see her again. So yeah, it. I would definitely look for a uh, a lower pitch prop, and then uh, you know you're not going to be able to just go with uh, one prop. You're going to need to buy a bunch. So and props are cheap enough that you can get away with buying a variety of four inch pop props. Um, start with a a low pitch prop. And do your acro stuff. Do what you would normally do. See what your amp draw is in your OSD. Feel your motors. Are they hot? Is it giving you the the punch and the bite you're looking for? Because there's there's gonna be two factors you're gonna look for. Well, maybe more than two, but for me, two factors. Uh, the first one is can can the motor spool up? Uh, because the prop's really heavy and it's really pitchy. And if your quad's really heavy, your prop's not going to be able to get up to that higher op operating RPM. And you're going to suffer. The motor's going to get hot. Your battery life is going to be very short. And uh, you just won't get the performance out of them where they're supposed to, you know, where you're expecting them. Now, if, if they feel fine, they sound fine, they're not drawing a ton of power, you can start going up in pitch. Higher pitch will give you higher thrust. 
most likely to give you more bite in the corners like, or like when you're trying to do like quick snap rolls, it'll give you more bite. Um, so I would probably say start off with that, uh, those uh, 40, what is it, 40 32s or 40 23s? Um, what did I say? Not those. Go away. Don't like you. Uh, yeah, these 40 32 tri blades. These are probably a good place to start. Give these a shot, buy a couple of them, uh, fly them, see how your quad uh, reacts. If those are fine, then start going up in a higher pitch. Um, like these uh, 4x4.3. The problem with 4, four inch props is there is not much variety. Like, like this is, this is about the most variety, but you're not looking for buy blades and you're not, you know, like you don't want an APC prop because that, that's going to be just brittle garbage. Uh, the advanced scimitars are great props. HQ, I have my issues with HQ. I don't really, I don't really like them. I don't find them to be very durable at all. Uh, but that's my recommendation. Start with a set of a lower pitch, buy a bunch of different props, and go out and fly them. Start with the low ones, see what works, and start going up. Eventually, you'll find a point where the quad just doesn't want to spool up, or your battery life is just turns to shit. And then you know that you went too far. It's like uh, it's like jetting a bike, you know. Make the jets bigger and bigger and bigger until it runs like crap, and go back one. Ah, uh, let's see where we at here. Um, using HQ four by three by three motors never get hot. And fly smooth. Um, yeah, you know, for acro, I feel like you can fly the same prop forever and not really. I really need to upgrade racing. Um, I think that's where all the prop innovation is, is with racing because you're looking for uh, better flight time, more power, more control, more durability. Racing encapsulates all that stuff. Acro does as well, but it's a much more varied workload. Um, racing is just hard on everything. And I think that's where the manufacturers go is to racing to vet their props. I mean, obviously there's companies out there making like super smooth cinematic props, the Johnny props and stuff like that. But when you buy those, you know that that's what you're looking for. But racing, like I've been through maybe four or five different brands of props. And each time I change my prop, it's just light years better than the one before. But there are also give and takes. Uh, but if the if the four by four by threes are working well, um, try going up. I, I mean, I don't know if you're looking for something looking for something different than what you have. I mean, if you're looking for a different type of flight profile, then you're gonna adjust your prop for that. If you're looking for smoother, more cinematic, flowy type stuff, where you're not like doing big throttle punches, then prop down. If you're looking for a ton of power, quick snaps. Uh, and at a sacrifice for maybe a little bit of vibration and uh, shorter battery life, then prop up. Uh, double A, he's been doing an R to see learning to fly drones. I told him we would build this one together. I've been looking at build frame since day one. Cool, man. Uh, let's see. LLS and hello, Tweet. Could you tell me what the most efficient? most efficient five inch frame motors for freestyle uh let's see well efficient frame that's that's a really loaded question because for freestyle you're do people build freestyle uh quads way too heavy i i don't understand it be honest like the best flying freestyle frame i had was a floss three like it's a race frame you crash it you're gonna bust an arm but the sacrifice is lightness um some of the other better flying frames i had were all armaton products uh like the the rooster was a really good flying frame for me um so uh, as far as motors go uh i prefer 2207s the brother hobby uh, 2207. Let me grab a set right here. Uh, these guys here. These are uh, these are my favorite motors. Um, the Brother Hobby UC 2207, 1750 kV. I'm running these on 6s. They are very very 
light motors, very powerful too. Um, they're not they're not the most powerful motors out there, but the reduced weight makes a huge difference. I've got another quad that's identical, and I put um, the T motor Velux motors on it. That thing weighs a ton. The motors are super heavy. The place where you want to save weight, motors, motors, and batteries. Motors and batteries, uh, for me, that's where I try to save as much weight as I can. And even now, I'm still learning how to build lighter crafts. That They all fly better. The lighter the weight, the better they're going to fly. Oh, uh, let's see. Where are we at? Uh, let's see. Double A, I've been looking at, at it, the build, for instance, day one. Love how it looks. I'm proud of the team, yeah. Um, drone ready, sup tweet. Drone Nation, hey, buddy. Welcome to the stream. Um, spec is Evans Motors for this right 533. Yeah, um, originally they were these Zing uh, 1404, 4600 KV motors. That was before Evan uh, Turner's company, 533, came out with their own motor, but they're pretty interchangeable. I think his are a little bit lighter of a motor. Let's keep reading through here. Uh, Scott Switzer, my five inch is a iFlight Titan XL5. It's a tank. Yeah, so if you want durability, probably going to have to have weight. Um, probably one of the best flying freestyle frames I have is the uh, the Impulse RC uh, Apex. It is a incredibly well built frame. It's super durable. It does come with warranty, but most people don't realize it comes with like a one year warranty. Uh, the Apex is a excellent frame. It's heavy, or it's not. It's not super heavy. It's on the heavier side, but it's expensive. But um, you're kind of getting what you pay for with that one. Uh, Sai tweet. Did you see the upcoming whoop challenge? Yes, I did, and it is a doozy. Um, I've got a bunch of race gates, but they're like, they're like the actual micro size gates. So I had I went and ordered uh, a couple um, of the gates that they were using just to have them. You can never have too many gates, but I did have to go order some new gates. Uh, props off freestyle. I like heavy, and I like a tank. Well, if you like heavy, you like a tank, then it shouldn't be too hard to build. Um, Building heavy and tough is very easy in this hobby. You just thicker carbon, heavier frames. BQE is uh, well known for building super, super durable frames because they are heavy as crap. Uh, Big Sin, you'll tweet sent me an email a bit ago. I will. Is it super urgent where I should check it now or can I check it later? Let me know. Uh, let's see, double A. Thinking, uh, thinking too hard, my opinion. I made a list of parts, bought everything by weight. I'm starting to realize that they just have their tech by weight. Have fun and build. Yeah, you know what? In in the end, just build and go fly. You can, with enough stick time, you can fly a light quad and a hot heavy quad and get the same thing out of it. Racing, lightness does have its benefits. Less kinetic energy, less crap breaks when you clip a gate, things like that. Uh, Reese FPV, I love my alien now with a wizard arm. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I'm kind of surprised that they're that interchangeable, but I guess, well, I guess I'm really not all that surprised. I just had never heard of it. Um, I want something to fly. The Meteor 75 is pissing me off so bad. Uh, uh, big cent, what, uh, what's up with the Meteor 75? Why, why is she, why is she making you so angry? Uh, double A, I like the monoplate by weight, but it's not, it's a cool thing. Uh, yeah. Um, single base plates, they have their place. They tend to be more durable, but when you do break them, you're kind of, you're kind of a uh, SOL as far as like rebuilds. They're a pain to rebuild. Personally, I prefer uh, individual arms at this point. Uh, QAV R2 is solid and not so heavy. Uh, actually, I've got one of those here on the wall, and I never fly it. And I don't know why I never fly it, but I just don't. It's got right here. Uh, this one I actually outfitted with um, all the DJI goodness, so I had to put uh, 
you know, the, the ultra long standoffs on it, but it is a good flying frame. It's a, uh, it's more of a squished X style frame instead of the, the typical true X or the, um, stretch X, but this is a good frame for sure. So anyways, at the top of the uh, live stream, I mentioned that I'm doing a giveaway for the uh, the Get FPV Sub 250 crate for this month. No, last month. I guess new month as of a couple days ago. If you haven't gotten in on that, here is the link. Nope. Here is the link. Nope. Come on. There we go. Here's the link to that. I'll be giving that away. Um, so let's uh, let's do that 10:45. It's 10:20 where I'm at. Somebody remind me when we hit that time, and we'll we'll do the drawing on that thing. We'll get rid of that, get it to its new happy owner. By the way, if you do want that, you'll have to cover shipping. It's just uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, other news. Um, Go started shipping, I've heard. Uh, they've already started shipping to the retailers. So kind of cool to see that in, see that get in people's hands. Um, it's too early for me to jump out and get it. I, I, I like the idea of it, but uh, I want to see want to see how other people how other people take it, how it works out. Uh, let's see, I hate hearing that man. I uh, basically committed to Every variation of three inches. What's your favorite size? Um, I'll be honest, I fly more three inch and, and under lately than anything else. Um, did a multi GP event last weekend? Yeah, last weekend. It was nice to get out and fly the five inch, the, the big quads. Make a lot of noise, a lot of power. And uh, yeah. Variety is the spice of life, right? So anyways, back to this guy here. I need to get moving on this thing. So I am minus one USB cable. Dang it. Uh, got some one somewhere. There we go, USB cable. So let's get this guy into beta flight. Probably should have prepped all this before I started the stream, but uh, I don't have like a dedicated setup. I got to keep moving stuff around from computer to computer, depending on what I'm doing. Um, so one of the things I don't like about the 533 Tiny Trainer is the way the frame is set up. When you have the canopy on, you can't get to the USB port. That's kind of why I want to go with Falco X because it's like you don't ever really connect it to a, a configurator at all. But our power plug. Our USB port here is on the side, and it's a, a bit of a bear to get to. Get in there. Oh, let's see. Props off. Thanks for the help, buddy. Uh, hit that like button. Uh, R9 MM OTA has been working great on my um, Diatone R349. Yep, R9 MM is good stuff if you are willing to. Uh, take the little bit of effort it takes to get through and understand how their firmware system works. It's great. It's just as good as TBS, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Menomina, I've only had 5-inch, but kind of want to get some sort of whoop one day. Uh, yeah, get a whoop. Uh, so, flying 5-inch is awesome, but you can only fly it outside for the most part, and they're not very socially acceptable. They're loud. They're dangerous. The they're expensive. The whoops. Whenever it's crap outside, or you're it's dark out, or you're just sitting around instead of watching TV or looking at Facebook, or Instagram or YouTube, unless you're watching my videos, then then forget what I'm saying here. Uh, go fly your tiny whoop. Fly it around the house. Go piss the dog or the cat off. Just don't fly it in your wife's hair or whatever, and they will help 
they will help you bridge that connection between not getting to fly and getting to fly. That I, I, I get depressed when I don't get to fly for long periods of time. But with a tiny whoop, the inside of your house turns into turns into a jungle. You get to go places that you get to see things you never get to see, like flying on top of all your cabinets in your kitchen if you have like vaulted ceilings. How often do you see up there? And then you kind of realize how dirty and shitty it is, and you got to go clean it. But that, that, that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, I only got accidentally rewound like 20 minutes. So confused. I thought it was a little loop. <laughs> oh man, props off. I can't recommend a whoop yet. I like the B Brain brushless. Uh, so I have got this guy here. This I think is going to be my uh, my race whoop for the season. This is the B Brain or the, the newbie drone B Brain something whatever. I don't know. It's a brushless whoop. It's one of the new ones. This thing is pretty freaking incredible. Um, very impressed with it. It's like a Mobula 6, uh, but just way better build quality and it's tuned really well. It uses the, uh, the thing that really sold me on it is it uses the Bosch um, ICM gyro or the, the whatever the new, whatever the Bosch gyro is. It's the same one that, um, Brain FV uses so from all I from what I know now, there's only two people, two companies that use that gyro. They have it in this guy, and wow, does this thing fly really freaking good? And she's just she's just pretty. She'll be pretty after I get a hold get done using it too much though. So. Uh, so that I think is going to be my uh, my race whip for the season, unless something something new comes out that really catches my eye or is just that much different this will be the guy plus and again we're getting off on this these tangents like we always do hang on ah, the other thing i really like about it is it has these little hooks on the bottom of the frame which allow me to take this guy this is the insta 360 go if you don't have one of these you got to get one it is one of the most versatile action cameras i've ever used and it goes like so. And there you go. Looks like it's flying around taking a turd. But this creates some really interesting uh, possibilities for uh, filming. I could probably show you guys some of those. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Yeah. Let, uh, give me one second here. Let me dig up a file. Oh, let's see. Projects, Acro B, and there we go. Let's see if I can desktop capture this. So the only thing that's really weird about it is you've got to, uh, you gotta be really strategic about taking off. I kind of stick it between my feet to take off. There we go. So this is with the lens up. If you flip it down you, and have the lens on the bottom, you won't see the, the duct work, but look at that. Isn't that cool? And then you can change the ratio, so 19 by 6. It's kind of getting a little different different view. And then you can, you can shut stabilization off completely. And it's all just done through software. And I do have a FPV stabilization, which allows for... Um, Kind of roll stabilization it's just not quite uh, like a horizon lock like uh flow state does and i got three minutes of flight on this just this kind of cruising flight um, it's not the most durable camera in the world so i didn't go crazy with it and run the risk of dropping it on the tile or something like that but uh it does make for some pretty interesting uh, opportunities for HD video. And it's really good looking video too, by the way. Um, it, it's a little dark in this room, and I think I had a big fingerprint smudge on the lens, so it's a little kind of it's a little cloudy, but uh, you know, 
for the most part. I think it turned out pretty good. What do you guys think? You think this is a like a, a, a usable setup? If I flipped it around, you wouldn't see the duct, so just keep that in mind. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Mike Berg. Uh, let's see. I gotta get a whoop. Box, yeah, props off. Got, yeah, man, got a box. Whoops. I fly them all. I fly every single one of them. Uh, Mike Bourbon, 2FE, the B Brain Bushless board has a Bosch gyro. Yes, indeed, it does. Um, let me head over to my friends over here at New B Drone. And here's the one that I, that's, this is the one that, um, I just showed in the video. It's this guy here, the, uh, the Acro B, B Brain, BL, V2, BNF, FR Sky, Elemental P, QRS, LCM 13. Uh, but it does use the Bosch BMI 160 Gyro, uh, which I think is the same one that um, Brain FPV is using. So it does definitely use that special gyro. I, Double A says, I've not got myself one of the brushless rigs yet. I love my Tiny Whoop and Alien Whoop Zero. The motors are really cheap, but I'm uh, just now getting to be the point where I need new ones. So that is the thing I didn't like about brushed drones is you don't know that you need motor. It's it's insidious. Like they slowly get worse and worse and worse and worse. Whereas the brushless motors, they're the same all the time. They never change. I mean, obviously, if you hit them and bang up the bells and the, and the props or the, the prop shafts and the bearings. That that's a whole different thing, but they're the same all the time. Get yourself a, a brushless whoop. You will thank yourself and you will hate yourself for not, for not doing it sooner. They're so, so good. Um, let's see. Oh, geez. YouTube just did that thing where it jumps. Where are we at? Uh, da, 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 da. Scrolling through the chat. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Manamana, yeah, I do, do air mode on that thing. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Props off side. Do yourself a big favor and copy and dump the file for your Alma 6 just in case you have the same issue. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so with this, this thing here, I'm planning on doing a, uh, from scratch, I just bought a a, uh, a bind and fly, what do I do next kind of video. And that is step one, besides connecting it to Betaflight, is doing a CLI dump. Just so when you go ahead and you hit, oh, I want to update firmware, and you do it, and you think it's like a cell phone, and everything's going to work afterwards, and it doesn't, you have a place to go to get back. Or at least you have the information that somebody else can decipher to figure out what the options are that you should be selecting in Betaflight. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, Airbender, 250. I won the grips. Yeah, I, I know you won them. I sent you an email. You never responded. Go ahead and uh, reply to my email, tweetfpv at gmail.com. Uh, breast quads cost so much more in the long run. Uh, Brush whoops eat motors left and right. Yeah, uh, basically that that was my that was my feeling of brush quads in the end. Um, you're just constantly replacing motors. Like the higher performance the motors are, the shorter their life is. And I was just shocked at how fast I would go through like a set of plaid motors. It was, I mean, it was like one good race, maybe two races, and I needed new motors, and they slowly got worse and worse. Um, throughout the races. So, you know, it's like you're dealing with battery sag and motor fade ish, if that makes sense. Uh, but the brushless motors are so good. Not to say that the brush, the brush motors aren't, or the brush quads aren't, they're good in their own, 
in their own right. Uh, plus turtle mode. Turtle mode makes it worth it. <laughs> turtle mode is huge. Uh, let's see, going through the chat. All right, so let's get over to um, mm. all right, let's get over to beta flight, see if we can't get into this guy. So here we are, beta flight. First thing I do is uh, get rid of this not dark mode crap. What the heck is this? Expert mode. Uh, last tab on connect. Dark mode. Engage. There we go. That's so much better. First thing I do is I always check my board orientation. So reset the ZF, X, Z axis so that way it's pointing the same direction as I'm looking at it because I'm too stupid to figure it out. And as you can see, my board alignment is not right at all. Looks like I'm uh, 90 degrees off. So I need to do a change to that. So we're going to come over to configuration. And board sensor alignment, I'm going to do uh, yaw. Oh, let's do yaw at... Well, all right, so there's two different ways you can do it. You can change it here, or we can do um, gyro alignment. We'll do, we're gonna wanna go clockwise 90, I think. That is weird. All right. Let's just change this. So clockwise 90 wasn't quite right. I don't know why it's off. It shouldn't be. Let's go back to default. Save and reboot. And let's calibrate Excel rounder. So we're definitely 90 degrees off. Let's do, I guess 90 degrees flip. go zero. All right, that was just the easiest solution right there. Just, just do what makes sense instead of the, the, the predefined options. So, nose it down, that matches, nose it left, that matches, right, that matches. I'm not really sure what screen I'm even on in. Okay, cool. At least I'm doing that right. All right, let's go back over to the chat. So just so you guys know, I am on a single screen setup here. So when I'm doing stuff, especially in like beta flight, I can't watch a chat, but I'll definitely go back. If you really want to get my attention, or if you want to get my attention, uh, hit control, uh, hit uh, at tweet FPV and it'll light up in yellow. Uh, super chats are always welcome and I will definitely answer your question there if it's something important. Otherwise, I'm just hoping that somebody in the chat uh, helps you out. Uh, back to where I was, um, Airbender, yep, we talked, uh, responded to my email. Uh, da, da, da. Michael Kemp, just saying hi, thanks to all the content and the help in the chat. Hey, buddy, no problem. Um, more than happy to help. This, uh, this hobby's a little on the difficult side sometimes, and I hate seeing people get frustrated and just rage quitting. Um. Just learn how to use turtle mode. Turtle mode is awesome. <laughs> or 
Oh yeah, two two different ways to look at it. It's either a crutch or it's awesome. Awesome because you can go get your quad picked up and fly back. It's awesome if you like land on a roof and a tree, things like that. It's also a crutch because you tend to crash more because you know that you can go and get your quad back because it'll flip over and come back to you. Uh, let's see, what brushless whoop will allow to fly freestyle at home? What brushless whoop? Um, Mobula 6, um, the B-Brain, B-something, wow, God, their names are so difficult. This guy right here, um, this thing, she'll do acro all day, all day long. Um, Beta FPV has a couple really good quads for doing some acro -y type stuff. Go away. Oh, I hate webpage. Stop. Uh, the Meteor 65, awesome option. The um, the Beta 75X is another uh, good option, a bit more power, which isn't always desirable. Um, Yeah, the Meteor 75 brushless is another good option. And probably the my favorite one that they have, which they don't sell separately, is the one that comes in the uh, advanced kit. This guy here. It seems simple because it is simple. It runs uh, silverware, so there's no beta flight to mess with. It is just what it is. There's PID tuning, but it's all done through the OSD. But this is a really good flying 1S quad. Uh, good for acro. Good indoors, good outdoors. Huh, he never got it. Sorry, man. Um, I'm, I'm going to look right now. Da, 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 da. I will. I will resend it to you. Um, all right, reset. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Pam Flam, I also heard that from your mom. Your mom freestyles pretty well at home. <laughs> nice. Uh, so I'm going to have to look more into how that winter is knocking appearance. Appreciate the heads up. Uh, yeah. Um, I find I just use it to flip over. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Problem just finished. QAVR Cinewhoop 1507 with 2700 KV. Made for 6S. Uh, motors get hot. Uh, I lower the power, 66%, still hot. I'm going to try 4S. Any suggestions? Um, Cine, uh, Cine whoops, their motors always get hot. They're doing an awful lot of work. Um, but what's too hot? Like, if you if you touch them and go, shit, that's hot, and you can't hold on to them, that's too hot. If you can hold your hand on there and be like, uh, this is pretty hot, it's probably not too hot. You're probably right on the edge. Um, ducted, ducted stuff makes the motors work harder and they get a lot hotter. Um, make sure you don't have, uh, motor screws are too long because if, if it's touching the windings, you're just basically shorting to ground and they will get incredibly hot, but it may be normal. Try backing down your PID slider. Just take the master slider and just roll it back and see what happens. Um, definitely make sure you don't start turning down your filters. Um, definitely make sure it's not a hardware, a, a physical issue. Like, you know, your flight controller is mounted correctly. You don't have wires flapping around. You don't have stuff jiggling in the frame. Um, that, that'd be where, be where I start. Uh, Sai, props off. Uh, yeah, if you find it works, uh, DM me. If you remember, it's just going to update it. Email flight as soon as I get it. Um, I tried email flight. Didn't like it. 
Uh, my 75X, it was washing out bad. I needed to tune it so bad, but I ended up just flying around it. Uh, yeah, that's with a lot of uh, ducted whoops outdoors. They do tend to wash out. It seems like the bigger the motor and the the more power to weight ratio are, the less likely they're, they, they will do it. But most of the time, you just learn to fly around it. Um, usually, if you're in a situation where you get the prop wash out, you're probably in a kind of a shitty flight attitude anyways. Um, John Hales. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll check that after after the live stream because uh, I want to get them to you. I was kind of surprised that I didn't get a reply. Um, yeah, pods cause motors to get hot. Um, I have a Cinesquirt that a Shenzhou Cinesquirt. Motors get hot as heck, but they're fine. But they're hot. They're the hottest motors I've had on any uh, model I, I've ever built. But they're fine. They're a lot. Motors can get a lot hotter than we think they can, especially with a Cinewhip, because you're not going to have to worry too much about flying with bad, bent, dinged up props. So you can get away with running the motors hotter um, under good flight conditions. Unlike my five-inch uh, race frames, if with good props just flying around the field, they get hot. As soon as I bang a prop into the ground or into a gate and I keep flying, it's gonna toast a motor. So it's all balancing act. Uh, yes, can't touch the motor. Okay, um, first thing I would say is try, make sure everything's physically sound, make sure the props are well balanced. Um, beta flight default should be okay. Try rolling the, uh, the master slider down as far as your pids go. And if that doesn't work, try running on 4S. See what happens. See if the 4S makes it cooler. Uh, definitely make sure you don't have uh, screws touching the motors. Uh, Robert Orlep, time. It is time. Let's, uh, let's go over and do the things. Let's go to... Wheel of Names. And I'm going to move you to a different screen because I don't want you to see everybody's email address. And I'm sure they wouldn't want that either. Okay, so as of right now, I have 55 responses and I'm cutting it off in 3, 2, 1. If you didn't get in, I'm sorry. Let me try again next one. There we go. All right, Wheel of Names. Back to my. Screen share. Wheel of names. Here we go. That was from last time. Paste it in. Let's give it a good old shuffle. And we're going to spin this thing. All right, guys. Thanks for entering for the giveaway for the, uh, the sub 250 get FEV crate. And here we go. It's kind of crazy looking on my end. The winner is, I hope somebody who's in the chat, Tyler Sherrod T-Bird FEV. Oh my God, you are in the chat, aren't you? Congratulations, buddy. I love it when somebody who's in my chat, or at least you used to be in my chat, I hope you're still there. Um, I, I love it when somebody who's in the live stream chat actually wins it instead of just having to hunt them down. But that is awesome. T-Bird FEV, congratulations, man. Uh, Reese FEV, you have to have watched my videos. Um, uh, the the entry form was in my last uh, FEV crate. It was also in the comments uh, of this video a couple times. But uh, sorry, you missed it. Uh, I'll be doing another one next month for sure. I do giveaways all the time on these live streams. I do them on my Patreon. So if you hang around long enough, you'll find it. All right, so T-Bird FEV, congratulations. Uh, get a hold of me, tweetfev at gmail.com. Pretty easy to remember. Boom, there you go. Hit me up. Uh, big send, yep, I will check that email after this and I'll get back to you. All right. 
Yeah, I know I saw him in the chat. I don't know if he's still here or not, or if he uh, had to go take a leak or something. But T-Bird, you are the winner. Congratulations, my friend. I'm, uh, I'm happy for you. Uh, by the way, the, the crate is a set of three-inch uh, floppy props, folding props, whatever you want to call them, and four motors, four 14-0-something or other motors. Uh, so pretty good, pretty good box. Um, I, these, all right. They don't sponsor me. They don't give me shit. They don't help me out at all with this stuff. Um, I'm buy two of these because I believe in the product. The sub 250 crates compared to the um, the five inch box. The five inch box was cool because it included a t-shirt, which I like t-shirts. Except for I'm a fat guy and they size them way too small. The sub 250 box, everything that comes in the box is very useful stuff there's no fluff there's no things like like this it's a it's a quad stand like like who who wants a damn quad stand i mean eh. there's no there's no fluff in it it's just pieces you need the first box was a flight controller the next one was the esc this one was motors uh and a set of props in each box so i have a bunch of different props to try out and all the parts that I need and no nothing else. What you get in the box is more than what you're paying for the box. Um, so it may not be the stuff that you would choose if you were going to go buy uh, buy stuff to build a quad. But if you're patient and you just kind of do this for fun, um, in the end you will have a full quad build and um, of pro of products that Team Order chooses, and they don't choose junk either. These are these are all good good parts. Alrighty then. Let's uh, stream settings. Oh, I didn't change my latency on the stream. Ugh. I normally select ultra low latency so I can get like a really quick back and forth one on one with you guys, but I did not do that this time. So the latency I think is about, I think it's about a minute. Um, so sorry about that, guys. So if it seems like it's a uh, back and forth. Yeah, it's because it is like it is. That didn't make any sense, did it? It's been a long weekend. It's been a great weekend. The weather's been freaking phenomenal all week. I've been, I've ridden the motorcycle to work and around every day for like the last two weeks. It's been, it's been great. Okay, so. Let's get back to the build. Back to beta flight and back to my build here. So uh, I already committed the cardinal sin of new builds. First thing you want to do is go to the CLI type diff all and then hit uh, copy to clipboard. And what I'll do is just go out to my desktop, create a new text document. Uh, what is this saying? Tiny Trainer Mamba, go in there, dump that in there, and then just save it. So now we should have um, everything we need in case we really screw this up and have to go back and start over from scratch. At least we know what's in there, or at least what the configuration was. Um, so back to beta flight again, since we did that, come back up to the top. I start off with my setup, make sure that again, like we did in the beginning, make sure our angle we do is doing what we wanting it to do. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to do is update beta flight. So instead of going to the CLI and figure out what version we have, we can figure it out up here now. Actually, we kind of always could have. So the target is Mamba F411, and I've got Beta Flight 357, so I want to update to the new stuff. We're going to hit Activate Bootloader DFU. Hit Update Firmware. Uh, Manamana asks, how many boxes would it take to build a Woo? Uh, woo uh, so the box is oriented towards 3-inch. Um, so we had, let's see, we had, first one was 
flight controller, and then ESC, now motors. I'm assuming the next one will probably be a camera and maybe a VTX and a frame. So I think it's six boxes. I think it's half a year it takes to build a quad. And that's the way it was for the um, full-size quad box. So it was, uh, the first one was a, oh, it was that QAVR that I showed earlier. And then the next one was a T-Motor uh, Yima frame. So it was six months. So six, yeah, I think it's six months to build a quad. So six boxes. Um, obviously, it's, you're playing the long game on that one. But, you know, I, I'm doing it for, for the YouTube and for the funds of it. Robert Orlop says five. Um, yeah, it could be five. It depends if they double up the camera and VTX in the same box, which they might just because of the cost of things. It would make sense that they would. So you'd have uh, one box flight controller, ESC on two, motors on three. I'm assuming the next one will probably be camera and VTX, four, and then the next would be a frame. So five, maybe six. I don't know. It, it depends. It, it depends if they break up the camera and the VTX. Uh, let's see. Oh, how good am I at CSGO? Oh, I, I fucking suck. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not a gamer. I used to be back in the day. Then I went five years with no internet access, uh, at my last place I lived. So I kind of gave all that up. Uh, I play it just for fun. Um, more than anything. Um, Majeko, welcome. Uh, I don't. I don't know habla espanol. Sorry. Uh, I took two years of Spanish in high school, but that was a freaking long time ago. Uh, Ventures of X. What do I do if I commit cardinal sin of not typing diff all? Messed up my first tiny hawk. Struggling to bring it back to life. Uh, well, what you can do is go to my Discord and say, hey, I need a stock dump for a tiny hawk, and I can give it to you because uh, I have a bunch of them stored. Uh, L. Elston, have a good night. As usual, very nice stream. Very inclusive. All right, L. Elston, L. Leston, thanks for stopping by, and uh, I will see you again next time, man. Uh, Menomina, I bet it's random parts. Never know. Yep, it is random parts. And you never know. <laughs> uh, Robert Orlep, they should send cameras last. Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Or maybe the frame last. I don't know. It typically... Let's see, the last... I think the last FPV crate, the five inch one I got was a frame first. I don't know. I, I, I don't know their, their planning. Uh, but anywho, beta flight. Okay, so Mamba. Mamba F411. And we're just going to do the newest version. Make sure we do a uh, full chip erase load firmware online and flash firmware da, 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 she's flashing um and I'm gonna, yeah it makes it fun makes it kind of random you know um in the big boxes it was kind of nice because you get a lot of weird stuff and i would just give that stuff away to people that were kind of needed it like the hardware kits with the leds or the the crappy falcor camera that they sent i don't like that thing I think all I need for my five inch is a VTX. Which VTX you plan on going with? I'm kind of curious. Uh, props off. Yeah, I do believe my go-to size would be three inches. I have a 1S, 3S, a few 4S, uh, three inches. I'm filming a Gank Nemesis three inch rolling 16 by 16 Fox Ear toothless straight, or Starlight, sorry. It should be epic. Hopefully. Uh, man, that sounds like a pretty pretty nice build. Oh my god, I can change the size of the font in the chat. This is going to be so much better. I'm just, I'm like, I don't read well. Start off, I don't read well through here. So, um, it's hard to see the chat window when it's as far away as it is for me. And uh, I just realized I can uh, blow up the, the, the font. So, that helps. Alright, flash successful. We're going to hit connect. And it's going to give me this window that says there are custom defaults to the board. Blah, blah, blah. Apply custom defaults. It's going to dump a bunch of pre, uh, pre-done CLI type things. And 
we're going to go and calibrate accelerometer because that's what they want you to do first. And this is really tripping out here. I've never seen that before. Interesting. Uh, and then just like before, we're going to make sure our, our angles are doing what they're supposed to do. And they are. So we're good there. Ports. We're going to come up to ports. And the thing I like about Mamba is they actually include the, uh, the pinouts in a card, which a lot of manufacturers are not doing anymore. And uh, I'm just going to use that to set up my my ports, which I completely forgot where I hooked everything up at. So, this does not look like enough yards at all. What is going on here? Uh, let's see. Well, UART1 is going to be CRX, UART2 is going to be, um, oh, is that smart audio or not? I don't remember. Let's go back here and check. So I'm using the Flywoo VTX. Sorry, I've got a really squeaky chair in here. Flywood VTX. Go back over to the chat. Uh, let's see. Oh, well. Um, Got to scroll back up. Uh, let's see. Sorry. So I got a uh, got a question that might stump you. So my father bought a tiny Tiny Hawk two. Ended up losing all the CLI files, and he put the dump file that Emacs gives. And when you plug the battery in, it just smoked. That is not from programming. That is that is something physically got damaged. Um, so here's my guess. If somebody said this is what happened, take it for what it's worth. I may be wrong. I may be right. Your father bought a tiny hut too. Ended up losing all the CLI files. Okay. So he put a dump file on. So he lost the CLI files because something happened to the board. The dump doesn't make a bit of difference. I could put in a dump for a completely different quad. You, It will not fry the quad. Uh, there was definitely something physically damaged with it. Possibly he lost the dump file because of some physical damage. Say um, the board got shorted and somehow it cleared itself. I really don't see that happening. But um, it's definitely not from the, from the configuration. It's definitely from... Uh, physical damage. Uh, but now I'm going to, I wouldn't mind a rush tank VTX. Those are expensive. Uh, yeah, I think I've got a rush tank sitting on the shelf somewhere. They're pretty nice. At 35, you start to lose your short sight. Okay, well, I'm, I'm past that. Uh, I've had PRK in the past, so um, it, you know, it, it's not forever. Um, Robert Ortlip, soft cereal. What are we talking about? Soft cereal. What are we talking about? I don't know. Uh, Robert Ortlip, I, I, you lost me there. Uh, Rotorite has the Mach 3 for 38 shipping. Uh, props off Tramp UTX. That or get a 2D. Let's see. Flywood VTX is Tramp. And it gets freaking hot. Oh, Tramp. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Cool. Thanks. Um, Mike Bergman, thank you, brother. Uh, use all the help I can get. Uh, Vectors of X, F channel, by the way. Uh, I'm getting back into YouTube and my motorcycle channel. Now it's more of a motorcycle drone <laughs> channel. Uh, so much respect. Uh, what kind of motorcycles? Uh, street? Dirt? What are we talking about? Oh, he hit the factor. Uh, so something happened between hitting that button and then the, the reconfiguring it because the um, the configuration will not make the thing fry. Mamba 411, soft cereal. Wow, I'm still 
I'm still lost. What are we talking about, man? Still lost. Uh, so yeah, the Flywoo Goku is a Tramp. Tramp BTX. I go to Beater Flight. IRC Tramp. Save and reboot. Starting on Harley now, we're at a BMW R1250 GSA street. Okay, so um, that's kind of cool. Uh, I have a uh, an 09 uh, R1200 GS, which I've been riding a lot lately because my 2010 Ducati Malta Strada 1200 has been having a lot of issues. Um, I think I have a bad coil on. I actually tore it apart today. Oh, short of UART, yeah. For because I don't have soft serial enabled, and I don't plan on enabling soft serial. All right, so we've got that configured, and once I enable uh, IRC Tramp, you'll see uh, VTX tables not been set up, so we're gonna have to set up VTX tables, which is pretty easy to do. Next one is go to configuration. This is going to be a D shot 600 build. Uh, props out for sure. Uh, big reason for props out is, especially for racing, is if you hit a gate instead of sucking you in, it'll tend to uh, push you out, which helps out a lot. Um, ESC sensor, bi directional a, a D shot. We're not going to worry about that at all. Um, accelerometer is fine. 8K, 4K, that is fine. Minimum arming angle. Uh, 180 craft name is going to be tiny trainer two camera angle. I always leave that at zero. This is going to be a crossfire setup. Soft serial. I'll shut that off. Telemetry is on. LED strip is is on. We're going to need that. Air mode. OSD. Okay, save and reboot. Actually, I just remembered that um, the 533 actually has a good CLI dump for this. At least a good place to start off, especially with the the uh, work with all the LEDs. Come on, let's go. So we're just gonna control C, control V, back to beta flight. I know I've wasted a bunch of time already because I was screwing with this, uh, but we're just gonna go and cut our losses and do the old CLI dumpage. What happened? Did she freeze up? Oh, that's it. And then uh, I gotta do a save. There we go. Uh, Adventures of X, I've had Ducatis my entire life. Um, the maintenance doesn't scare me at all. The valve adjustment, uh, they want you to think it's black magic, but it's all pretty easy shit to work on. Uh, what's with the battery, battery indicator? I have no idea. It, uh, it is acting really freaking weird. Probably because the scale and everything's off on it. But uh, yeah, I've never seen one do that. It's, it's uh, kind of weird. Not really sure why it's doing that. Yeah, it is. 
Let's power cycle this thing, see if something happens. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's up with it. That is that is awfully weird. Maybe uh I don't know, maybe it's because I have that back installed. Let's see what happens. Let's let's power this thing up to it. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had a bunch of older ones. Um, I've had a few newer ones, but uh, I don't know. The they're they're not that hard to work on. At least I haven't felt like they're hard to work on compared to some of the other stuff I've had to work with. Yeah, the cooling system failures. I have read a lot of horror stories. Luckily, I have I have avoided a lot of that. All right, so we're gonna have to go back and just make sure everything's stuck the way it's supposed to be. Come with your LED strip. Okay, cool. So LED strip. Um, man, I gotta remember how to do LEDs. LEDs were always such a pain in the ass. Function, color. Well, I'll mess with LEDs later. I gotta buy my receiver, which, oh, dang it, this thing is just buried in here, isn't it? All right, well, we'll, uh, we'll look at that here in a bit. Yeah, um, I. I enjoy riding the GS when I need to, but I don't know. It's 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 a boring bike. It's boring boring to me compared to the multi. Uh, the the multi shroud is just um, it is just a pure rush compared to the BMW. Um, but the BMW the BMW does everything well. It just, it goes, it stops, it starts, it it, it turns. I, I don't care for the tail lever front end. I think it steers like a bag of shit in a parking lot. But again, that's that's just my opinion. Uh, but I don't do any off-road adventure type stuff with either one of them. So um, obviously, if you're doing that, the GS is going to be for sure the way the way to go. Uh, all right. So let's. I am, I am confused as to why this thing is acting so weird. Unless maybe I flashed the wrong firmware. That's certainly a possibility. Let's go back to that dump file. I'm at four eleven. Hmm. That's what I put in there, right? Oh no, I did Maytech. That's why. That's why it's acting weird. Because I flashed the wrong thing. What an idiot. Yep, see, that's the issue. Ah, <sighs> you guys weren't paying attention. I flashed the uh flash the wrong firmware. I did uh Maytech. I wanted to do Mamba. Mamba F411, there we go. That will make a huge difference.
Yeah, you know, I looked at the uh, Boots to Boots Ten JDM. I looked at your uh, your Thingiverse files. You know, let's uh, let's head over there. And we'll take a we'll take a little gander at them. See what uh, see what everybody else thinks. Did the mouse just die? Come on. What's going on? Oh, that's freaking weird. I just lost my mouse pointer for some reason. What is going on? Here we go. Ooh, things are working, acting weird today. So I know you, I know you said something on one of my videos. That certainly looks better. I don't know how well that would look when you actually three D print it. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of good flat surfaces to start with. I mean, it looks good in the renders. Yeah, this might print well. I don't know. I mean... These do definitely look better than the uh, the cyber truck looking front end that's on the um, on the tiny trainer, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go with what what came with it just because it's uh, it's already printed. I don't really want to waste it. Double A. We'll see you later, buddy. Yeah, a lot of supports, right? Oh, anywho. Back over to... Back over to Betaflight. And let's go ahead and reconnect this guy. Well, that looks a heck of a lot better than it did before. Configuration is looking good. Tramp. D shot 600. Props out. 180. GT2. Nope. Can't capitalize 2. CRSF. No soft serial. Telemetry. LED strip. RX lost, save and reboot. And let's go dump this in here. Bit, save. There we go. Uh, power and battery. Four point five. Minimum cell three three. Warning 3.5, that looks all good there. Save. Fail safe should be auto, 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 and then drop. Good. PID tuning. We'll leave that the way it is. Rate profile. Um, yeah, I'll leave it. Receiver. Back to needing to program or uh, rebind the seat receiver. Uh, Bootston JDM says prints just like the render. I've done a dozen of them, that dozen or so of them now. Well, cool, man. I'll uh, I'll probably I'll definitely try it. See how they turn out. Um, I definitely not a fan of the uh, the cyber truck, the cyber quad looking front end on this stupid thing. But uh, like I said, I've already got it printed. Oh, let's see, Robert Orlov, I have TPU on my Prusa flowing like glass now. Um, 
yeah, I got a Prusa, and it does TPU pretty good. Um, I think by the time I got rid of my TiVo Tarantula, I think the Tarantula definitely did TPU a little better, but I had a lot of money into that, getting it printing right. But now I'm gonna, I can't do anything on Betaflight. Well, why not? Ventures of X props out. That's how I screwed up my Tiny Hawk 2. Thought the benefits would be uh, good with the weight of the Insta to go, but hit that step of F, hit that steep FEV learning curve. Had to order another. Huh. Uh, I don't know why that would cause any issues doing props out with the Tiny Hawk 2. Um, it shouldn't have made much of a difference at all, if anything. I mean, it wouldn't have flown. Uh, until you flipped your motor direction around in, in beta flight. Oh, no computer. Well, yeah, that'll that'll do it. Uh, I find pet G's easier to print than TPU, but I'm sure it's probably pretty common. Color. All right, let's go with. I'm not really sure how many LEDs are here. Function. Color, do red. I'm not... Every time I do LEDs, it's like a learning curve to re-remember how to how to do it. So I don't ever remember. There we go. Function, color, and save. There we go. That's how you do it. I, I keep forgetting. So, uh, how many LEDs are in here? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. All right, so we got seven here, and then what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fifteen, so fifteen. color there we go that should be all of them there we go that's how we get the LEDs running all right back over to the chat sorry guys whenever I'm in beta flight I'm I can't really monitor the chat at the same time uh, let's see the issue was with loading firmware without keeping record of data Oh, oh I, I got you. Sorry, Adventures. I, I wasn't following. Uh, but now when I had to send my phone to a guy in the U.S. to help me program it, oh, man. Uh, do you have a phone? Because with SpeedyB, you can do all the beta flight stuff through your your cell phone telephone. SpeedyB app right here. This, uh, this is beta flight on your phone. Do you change, uh, Mahel Reddick, uh, do you set the color change on a pot? Uh, I don't, but you can. You absolutely can. Um, post a few pics of my Tiny Talk 2 and a few threes to your Facebook. Well, let's go to my Facebook and see what we got. 
uh, facing the book and let's see what we got. That is not what was supposed to be there. There we go. I am sick of freaking spam on Facebook and text messages. Technical error. What the hell? Well, that looks pretty damn good. Yep, yeah, I'm going to have to print one of those. For some reason, Facebook's being a turd and not uh, not showing things the way it should. But yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm, I'll have to give one a try. Oh, let's see. Facebook link. Yeah. Uh, lately, I've been getting invited to groups in Instagram and Facebook, and it's just it's just pure spam groups. I don't I don't understand why things are like the way they are. Um, you can put a nice set of LEDs for them too. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I like the LEDs. I like LEDs, so we can make these. And LEDs are, you know, they're subjective. You know, you don't have to do this. I just like the way they look. Seven, and then. So I have one too many up here, so we're gonna clear that one. Save. There we go. Well, I broke it, so I need to clear these. And reassign these ones because I lost seven. No, oh, what the hell's going on? Screw it. Clear them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then another eight. These ones here, color, add, color, and let's do blue. There. There we go. Uh, I do have a computer, but it's way out of date, about 15 years or so. Oh my goodness, that is a, that is, does it, does your computer have USB on it if it's 15 years old? I would, I would have guessed probably not, not unless you add it to it. All right, so we got the most important stuff done. We got, uh, we got our USB, our, uh, our LEDs set up. So we're going to go over to video transmitter. So it's a tramp video transmitter and we need to set up uh, BTX tables. So go and click here. This will take us to some template BTX tables. Uh, IRC tramp in the USA. We got that one here. Nope, that's not what I wanted. So we're gonna right click and hit uh, save link as, and I'm just gonna save it to my downloads. There we go. 
Go to beta flight, load from file. Bring up my TBS VTX table. So this is the VTX table for, um, the, sorry, the IRC tramp. So this is the VTX table for it. What we need to go back to our setup here. We're going to find Flywoo, what to do. Oh, and it's nice. They have a VTX table here. Um, I think they have a VTX table dump on their website if you want to use it. But really, the only thing you need to do is you need to find out what the power output options are. Or you can just download their VTX table if you want to do that. But this VTX will do um, 2550, 100, 200, and whatever max is, 450. So these are the power outputs. So we can go back to Betaflight and do 250, 2550, 100. So 2550. 100 200 and 450 so what I'm doing is just changing the labeling of the VTX output power this value up here doesn't really mean anything this just means step one step two step three four five so if this VTX was a 25 and 500 milliwatt VTX with only two power options this first one would be 25, this next one would be 100. But when the, but when Betaflight says, hey, I want you to go to level two, it's gonna say, oh, that is option 100. But the, 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 the OSD will display whatever you put in that bottom box. But since level two is gonna be 500 milliwatts, that's what it's gonna do. Um, in this case, level two on mine is gonna be 50. And level three is 100, level four is 200, and level five is 450. Um, so you, all you gotta do is just change the labels to make sense. And if there's more, or if there's more labels than there are power options for your VTX, you just go back to this and you change uh, the number of power level outputs right there. And we're gonna hit save. So that should have my VTX set up. Uh, let me grab a little monitor. Be right back. Power this guy up. So there's my monitor. Now this doesn't do me any good if I don't have a if I don't have a controller set up. But anyways, we'll just make sure the camera and VTX are working. There we go. Camera and VTX definitely work. Set that aside. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, it does have a uh, USB. Barely runs though. Uh, Pistorm would love to put a uh, support arm from motor one to four in the front, uh, left to right. Late night rider. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Um, You lay the chin flat and you use supports everywhere. When dialed in, you get you just rip the supports off of players. Yeah, that's kind of what. Uh, that's the same way that these print is uh, chin down. So let me go get my controller. Oh nope, no, that's right here. Yep. Yeah, let's bind this bad mamma jamma. Welcome to Tango Two. Menu, crossfire. So here's a bug with the uh, with the firmware that's on, or the version of Freedom TX is if you go from external module to to a crossfire enabled one, uh, it doesn't work. You got to power Welcome cycle it. To Tango two. Timer one All right. So now I got to get back underneath this guy. Because I didn't plan this out. You know, I think I might be able to hit the 
I think I might be able to hit the power button or the bind button from the side here. Carefully. There we go. Got it. Um, asked me to bind or uh, update the VTX. I'm going to do that. I'll let her go. Uh, props off. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it here uh, as soon as we get this thing bound up. Just wait for Crossfire to update the receiver. It seems to not really be doing for some reason. Maybe it is. I don't know. Let's see. We play the waiting game. Well, uh, you guys want to do a give another giveaway tonight? Let me know. Put in the uh, the the doobly do. I got some other stuff kicking around here that I think needs a new home. If you guys want it. We'll do a uh, do a super chat giveaway. So this is the nice thing about Crossfire is it will automatically update everything. FR Sky doesn't do it automatically, but you can still do it over the air with the new the new hardware, which I don't know, it works works just fine for me. Oh, the Tango Two plastic case, well. That, uh, my friend, was sent out to a guy in Florida that does Cerakoting. And if, if you know what Cerakoting is, it's a, uh, it's a ceramic baked on coating for firearms. And he's been trying to branch out into the FPV market. And he, uh, he did my radio case and he did my Orca goggles. Let me grab those. Uh, and they turned out really, really nice. So here's the goggles that he did for me. Oh, got to give him a frame. So they are, uh, that is, that's a baked on finish. Like you can scratch away at it with your finger and uh, it ain't going nowhere. So he did the, the, the radio and the goggles to match. So that's a custom deal. This was the, the nostalgia case. The standard black cases tend to melt in the oven. Kind of weird. Goggle module, uh, market zero. Uh, what are we talking about? Goggle module. Oh, you're looking for a goggle module, aren't you? Uh, how durable is it and how expensive is it? Uh, well, it was, he didn't charge me because he, he, he needed the stuff to take product photos, but I think he said that a job like this would be, um, I think he said it'd be like 50 bucks. I, I, I can't, I, I honestly don't remember. Uh, solo customs on, uh, the Instagram. Mike Bergman, I uh, also sent a couple of pics of my tiny trainer with naked Vista. It's a custom prints to your Facebook message. You got a sec. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I do have a sec. Let's. Uh... So that is bound. Let me go back to beta flight real quick. Make sure this thing actually took. Go to receiver and 
I'll wiggle them sticks, but they're set up wrong. So throttle is doing my roll. So I'm just going to do T A E R one two three four. So that's just the way I set mine up. Save. Throttle. Roll. Pitch. Yaws. One. Four. Three. And two. Cool. So that is set up and good to go. And let's see. What's next? Telemetry lost. over to Facebook here. There we go. Ooh, that looks freaking nice. I like that. That is that has a good looking tiny trainer. And you managed to shoehorn the Vista in there. Look at that. That's a lot less of a cutout than I thought you'd have to take. Um, very nice. And would you use what paint pen on the uh, on the edge there to give it that white look? That God, that looks good. You did a really good job, man. I like that. It looks mighty fine. Mighty fine work, my friend. The voltage did it again. What? It did? Voltage looks fine. Telemetry I probably did that because I disconnect the battery. So if I pull the battery out, it does that. It starts running through the different voltage, volt eyes. Voltages. Alright. Let's go ahead and see if this uh, tramp audio works. So let me see if I can see what you're seeing. Make sure we all see what we're seeing. Okay. So let's go ahead and. I have no OSD. Which is awfully weird. Oh, so. I don't have an OSD on here, so what we got to do is, I don't know why that's not working. Things are weird right now. Let's disconnect and reconnect. OSD, font manager. Hmm. Why, why come you don't have OSD? For some reason, I don't have an OSD right now. Oh, there we go. So we just had to cycle it, and it seems to work now. Really weird. That is really, really strange. Okay, so we go to Features, VTX. Uh, let's see if we can change to... R8 and set firm, yes, nothing channel down. Oh, I'm already on R8. Uh, let's see, you what, what channel are you having problems with? You were saying.
R2. All right, so let's change to R2. Let's go R2. And set. There you go. All right, switched. R2. Yeah, my uh, my tramp audio definitely works. Uh, I fly R8. It's kind of like my fun fly channel. It's so the way we do it in our field is everybody has like a fun fly channel. And then when this races, then we just use uh, live time to ass assign rate uh, our channels. Go back, back, and save and exit, and save and exit. There we go. So that's that's that. That works. Yeah, R2 seems to work. Tramp audio seems to work. Not not any issues there. Okay, so next thing to do is to uh, check motors. Again, plug it in. Oh, so yeah, let's go back. Um, if you guys want to do a super chat giveaway, I have uh, I have a couple different things here. I've got a set of these uh, Luminar LEDs. So these are a four cell or four LED cell uh, programmable LED. I got two of these. Um, I really don't want to give these away, but I think I will. No, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, should I? Uh, all right. And this little guy here. This is the, um, if you've got a DJI set of goggles, this is the um, iFlight faceplate adapter with the back to put rapid fire in the front of your goggles. And then also a set of grips because why not? Everybody needs some grips. So let's do that. That's going to be a, uh, let's do a $3 super chat, $3 super chat for um, the two LEDs, the goggle adapter, a set of grips, and I'll throw in a couple different varieties of propellers. Just whoever wins, let me know if you're flying five inch or three inch and I'll throw in a set. So uh, $3 super chat. If you guys are interested, if not, you know, we'll just, We'll move on. We'll uh, we'll do something another day, but uh, that's what I got kicking around right here. I know the the DJI goggle adapter is kind of a niche market thing. Shift. I'll get you in there. Let's. Uh... Got you in there, shift for one go. Mana, 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 mana. Got you in there for one. And uh, we'll uh, we'll spin this sucker at, uh, oh boy, it's getting late. How about uh, 12 15? We'll spin this guy. So just keep him coming in there. That's all right, man. You, uh, you, dropped, you dropped a dollar earlier, so we good. We good, bro. You got them uh, Kanucky Stan Kopex there. So while people are figuring that out, let's go back over to Betaflight. My next step in Betaflight setup is to do uh, the motors tab. Come over here, fire this bad boy up, and we're going to go and run up each motor. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that the motor slider I'm moving is actually moving the associated motor on the diagram here, which is this one. And I want to check the direction. And I do that. I just stick a little card in there. So motor one is spinning the wrong direction. Motor two is the correct motor. And that one is also spinning the wrong direction. Motor three. Correct motor. 
and that's spinning the right direction. And four, correct motor, correct direction. So motors one and two need to get reversed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close that, disconnect, and we got to close beta flight. So we're going to go to my apps, and I have BL Heli Configurator. And you gotta be you gotta be sure to close beta flight, otherwise this isn't gonna work. Hit connect. And it's not going to work. Let's uh disconnect this, disconnect that. I'll reconnect my USB cable, reconnect power. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. And UR5. No, oh, COM5, that's why. All right, so we connected and we're going to hit read setup. And here we go. So one and three, we're going to go and we're going to do reversed. Uh, sorry, one and two. Shut up, radio. Receiver still connected. Noisy. All right, so we're going to reverse one and we're reverse two. So we want to do reverse, not bi directional reverse. That, that would be for like uh, 3D mode. And we'll just hit right setup. And that's that. And while we're in here, we can uh, see if there's any firmware updates that are needed. So and check, see we're on, uh, we're GH30, we're at 16.7. And 16.7 is still the official. There's an official beta, and I'm not really gonna mess with that. I think the beta is incorporating the bi-directional D-shot. Um, so not gonna mess with that at all. Back to beta flight. What is going on here? Beta flight. Why? Why are you doing this? Hmm. Well, apparently my computer is uh, deciding to not play with beta flight. <laughs> what the hell? There we go. Here we go. Boy, technology is tough sometimes. So I always go back to the motor tab and I recheck them just to make sure. Yep, that's right. And that is right as well. Always double check. Sometimes things don't take. Mm, sounds good. It isn't nothing quite like a fresh build. Market zero, three bucks. Sure, sure he says. Why not? Boom. All right, Mike Bergman, thank you. Uh, masked off the frame, spray painted the edge. Oh, you spray painted? Okay, cool. A lot of stuff to cram in there. That is for sure. Yeah, BL Heli can be kind of a bitch. Okay, so we've got the motors checked. That's good. Go to OSD. Uh, this is a PAL camera, so I always just set it to... Um, apparently that's not an option anymore. Huh, used to have a PAL NTSC option here. Not sure why that's gone. Weirdness. So, anyways, uh, I always put. I do. Craft name. Battery average cell voltage. Let's put that about 
here. Do timer one. No, sorry, timer two. That goes over here. VTX channel goes over here. And until I get this thing uh, tuned the way I like it, I put um, PID and write profile right here as well. And that's about all I fly with. Uh, sometimes I'll put amp draw and whatnot in there, but eh, that's about it. Uh, warnings, those are always on. Oh, and also flip over to crash arrow. And that'll go right smack dab in the center. And our SSI value over about here. Uh, post flight specs. Uh, black box number and black box usage. Uh, it doesn't have black box, so I get rid of those. And we save. Go see where those are centered up at on my OSD. You can make these changes kind of real time. So, I don't know why I don't see them again. Well, the OSD is acting awfully weird on this quad. <clears throat> oh well. Configuration. Let's see, it came back if I disabled OSD. And re enabled OSD. <coughs> there it goes. Pretty weird. Pretty weird. So, things are pretty much right where I want them. I'll probably move everything, all the elements down one block. Oh, here it is. NTSC. There we go. That's what I was looking for earlier. And the font that I like is the uh, the digital one. And upload font. There we go. That's that. Uh, modes, pretty simple. As far as my modes go, um, I do uh, arm on aux one, beeper on aux two, which is the the uh, button in the back of the radio. Flip over after crash. Sorry, uh, flip over after crash. I do. Um, Uh, aux 4, so it'll be this button on the back. And then uh, launch control is this button. Why is that not working? Oh, sorry, this one. That'll be launch control. Save. And this is what it looks like. So arm. Beaver, flip over after crash, and launch control. Not that I'll use launch control with this one, but I might. So we'll make that go over both, so I don't have to pick which switch, which spot that switch is in. So that's pretty much it. And it is pretty much completely set up. Black box. Um, there is no black box, so no logging. Save that. This battery is getting really low. Receiver still connected. Let's connect that guy. Shut this off.
that's about it. That is, that's the gist of my configuration, which really kind of sucks because if I want to cover this up, um, I need to change anything. I got to take the canopy back off it, which is always kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, let's see, back to the... What is that it does to me every time oh, auto detect? Yeah, it's a, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, plug, uh, boots it in, plug your battery in to get the rest of the OSD options to change fonts. That got me too. Uh, yep. Tweet, there's an LED kit for the tiny trailer that has 50 LEDs. It, it's so bright, it makes it look even more like the Racer 4. Uh, yeah, so I bought that kit, and I just didn't wire up the other LEDs to go under the arms. Um, I think keeping the ones on the canopy is just enough for me. Props off, it's 1 a.m., I'm out. Good night. See you, buddy. Robert Ortlip, oh, you got more drone tonight than the last two. Yeah, more done than the last two and a half weeks. That is for sure. Um, all right, I'm getting tired. My, I guess, uh, yeah, I'm getting tired. So if anybody wants in on this uh, Super Chat spin, uh, the LEDs, the goggle adapter, a set of grips, and some props, um, Three bucks, get in there. We're going to spin this thing in. Uh, let's make it like uh, a couple minutes here. Uh, I'm getting tired. I want to go to bed. Cool things come up on the channel. Uh, we talked about talked about this little guy. Um, I'll be definitely doing a, a full review on this. Um, I haven't had my Insta360 go for like the last three, four months. It went out for repair, and they're not doing things for COVID reasons. Finally got it back, and I was—I I didn't think I was missing it as much as I—I—I I, I was. I was sorely missing this thing. I've been using the bejeebus out of it since I got it back. Uh, a couple of the cool things coming to the channel is, um, oh, this. So this here, this was my my ult my ultimate one S HD whoop build here, and the thing I didn't like about it is I was—I don't like this frame. I've been waiting for the frames that were on the 75 light to come in, and they have finally started making them, and I got my hands on a few of these. So I'll be doing a full transplant and tear down, kind of to talk about it, to get this guy into this frame here. Super excited about that. And I think the next live stream, if I don't get a wild hair up my ass and decide to do it earlier, we'll be building this... Um, this naked uh, GoPro. I saw that Bardwell beat me to it. Not that I'm in a competition with him or anything, but I saw he just did one of these, and uh, I, I, I've had this for a couple weeks now, and I've been meaning to put that all together. Uh, side, I look at this week's whoop challenges. Yes, I did. So it's um, it's power loops with the gate at the bottom. As many as you can in 30 seconds. So uh, the gate at the the bottom of the loop going through like this in 30 seconds, and then power loops with the gate at the top of the loop, 30 seconds. Um, I have some newbie drone gates. They're the small ones. They're like the actual um, micro size ones. So they're 19 inches. So I bought a couple of the bigger ones just to uh, just to have them. Uh, B zero man, I'll get you on the board there. Hey, I got a little friend that came to see me. Hey, you. Oh. I think she wants to go potty. You want to go potty? I'll go potty after you. All right. I'm going to let her out. We'll be right back. Nope. We can do... She is old. 
has been around a while. It's a good dog though. But anywho, um, weather's been nice. It's definitely getting into uh, that whoop season. So we're going to be starting up the indoor series. And the thing I was looking for was my new indoor whoop. And I think that Acro is probably going to fit that bill pretty well. Um, I always like to take two with me, so I'll probably I'll probably be route racing the Acro B and probably the Mobula 6 as a backup. The Mobula 6 I have, I like it, but it's just unreliable. I've had a lot of failures with it between the flight controller catching on fire and then the, uh, the motor belts keep falling off of it and scattering magnets everywhere. Uh, so that'll definitely be a backup. But this uh, this Acrobee is it's really growing on me. It's it's really nice and it's got some pretty pretty slick looking LEDs inside of it. I'm gonna show you guys real, real quick here. Lots of LEDs. But anywho, so I think we'll get the spin going. Thanks for everybody who. Oh boy, Philip Storm. What is an A? What's an A? Is that Aus Australian somethings? What's that? What's that mean in in America dollars? Let's see what Google says. You did not help me at all. So, 10 of these, 7. So, I'll get you in there three, uh, twice. Philip Storm for 2. 1, 2. Daxty. So, we're doing a $3 super chat, so I'll get you in the wheel once. There you go. Thank you. Philip Storm, thank you so much for 10 Australian dollars. Really appreciate that. And uh, I think that will conclude the Super Chat spin for the week. Uh, folks, I try to uh, live stream at least once a week. It's either on a Friday or a Saturday, kind of depending on my work schedule. I, um, I do giveaways over on Patreon. I have a very active Discord. Um, if anybody has any issues and they're trying to set up, especially like FR Sky stuff. Um, whoa, whoa, what's going on? Oh, what'd I do? Uh, I have a very active uh, Discord if you're trying to set things up with FR Sky, especially the new access stuff. Head on over there. I can help you out. I've helped out tons of people in the past. And um, it's just a few little things to get you going. You'll be right as rain. But anyways, let's get this spin done. I'm going to randomize the crap out of this thing. And away we go. Good luck, everybody. And thank you very much. Market zero. Congratulations. You are a winner. You've always been a winner in my book. Congratulations. Uh, you know how to get a hold of me because you've gotten a hold of me in the past. <laughs> Thanks for, uh, thank you. Thank you all so much for the support. You guys are what make this hobby what it is. This hobby is freaking awesome. I love it. The people are awesome. I'm going to keep talking to you while I go let my dog in. I, I greatly appreciate everything you guys do. Wait, she's not here. Never mind. Thought she was scratching at the door. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, we'll get this tiny trainer built. I'm going to put the canopy on it, go out, fly it, tune it. And then, uh, next week we're going to go through what it takes to put, uh, flight one on it. As I haven't really seen a whole lot of reviews on how to do that. We're going to do it. We're going to get it done and see if the hype is there. All I know is uh, flight one tends to catch shit on fire and I hope that's not going to be the case, but well, you never know. I'm willing to do it for you guys.
but it's getting late. It's uh, it's 12:10 here. I'm getting tired. Um, eyes are getting dry, and I think it's time to call tonight. Thank you, everybody. Uh, if you want to support me, head over to that link tree that I put up earlier. Right here, this guy. Head over to that. Uh, that helps me out immensely. Not the link tree, but all those links in there are everything to do with what I'm doing. Oh, big news. Totally forgot about it is Pyrodrone is now carrying my FPV grips. I really should have let off uh, the top of the, the live stream with that, but I am a terrible YouTuber, apparently. Uh, super excited that uh, Pyrodrone is on uh, on Team Tweet Group. Tweet bit. Super excited that Power Drone is carrying my grips. Uh, so Power Drone, Race Day Quads, my Etsy store, those are the places to get it. If you're international, head over to my Etsy store. I only charge two bucks for shipping. Uh, it takes forever to get to you, but it's super cheap to get there. Uh, the affiliate links in the link tree, they are what they are. We all know how affiliate links work. They don't cost you anything. They help me out immensely. That's what justifies these vendors, manufacturers, retailers sending stuff to me to review, to tell you about, to help you guys out with, and eventually to give back to you guys because I pretty much give away all the stuff I get from them. Most of the stuff that comes in the channel is paid for by myself, uh, if you didn't know. All right, guys, I'm tired. I got to cut this one short. Well, actually, not quite cut it short, but I just need to stop this. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking this out. And again, be cool, help everybody else out, and uh, I'll see you next week.